Okay, we're going to look at another example. This is example two from our notes packet from class. Uh, here we have a first order nonlinear. This is nonlinear differential equation because of the cube root that's applied to the y, to the dependent variable. So first order nonlinear differential equation uh, with y as the dependent variable and t as the independent variable. And we want to solve this differential equation, find a general solution any singular solutions, and then the particular solution that satisfies the initial condition. So this is a separable differential equation because the right side can be written as a product of function of the independent variable times function of the dependent variable. So it's really already written in that form. All right, so the first thing that we're going to do is divide through by the function of y. So we're going to have 1 over cube root of y times dy dt is t. And at the instant when you do that, you want to mark maybe something to go back and check that when you did that, if y is 0, there is a little bit of a problem there. So you need to come back here and check y equals 0. In particular, what you're really checking here is if y is the constant function 0, whether that is a singular solution or not. All right, so we will come back and look at that. Let's go ahead and solve this differential equation. So we want to integrate both sides with respect to the input variable, that's t here. All right, so on the left side, I'm going to rewrite that in just one little step here so I don't mess up with the fraction exponents. Remember that the dy over dt times dt simplifies to dy. They don't exactly cancel, but they simplify. So we have this expression. So on the left side, I just use my basic power rule. So I get 3 halves times y to the 2 thirds. And on the right side, 1 half t squared plus c. All right, so that's an implicit general solution. If I want an explicit general solution, I need to solve for y. All right, so in solving for y, I'm going to start by multiplying through by 2 thirds. When I do that, I'm going to absorb that 2 thirds into my C on the right hand side here. All right, so that C in that step is not the same as the C in the prior step, but the C really represents all possible real numbers. So all possible real numbers or 2 thirds times all possible real numbers is really the same set of real numbers. Uh, all right, to finish solving for y, I've got this 2 thirds power, so we want to think about what that really means. The denominator is a cube root, so in order to uh, get rid of that, we're going to cube both sides. I'm going to do this in a couple steps here, just so I'm super careful about things. Uh, so I'll be left with y squared, and I can't distribute through that exponent, so... So now to finish solving for y, I'm going to take the square root of both sides, but I do have to be careful with plus or minus. Okay, so this is actually two different general solutions. It's not the same solution, so I really have two here. y equals the positive square root and y equals the negative square root. All right, so there are two general solutions if I want it in explicit form. Remember, I had an implicit general solution up above if I don't care if it's an explicit form. All right, the thing I want to think about uh, with the singular solution is does y is the constant function 0, does that arise in this general solution for a particular choice of c? Remember, c is a constant, really can be any constant, but c is constant. And so if you think about that, there is no choice of constant that would make either of these be y equals 0, right? So y equals 0 is a singular solution for this one. Okay, so here are our solutions to the differential equation. Two different general solutions and a singular solution. Okay, so then the other thing that we want to do here is find a solution that satisfies the uh, initial condition and state the interval of existence for that. All right, so generally when we do that, we just plug that initial condition into our general solution and solve for C. So I have two different general solutions here really, so I'm going to start with the first one. Um, putting in 0 for Y and then I'm going to put in 0 for t as well. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and solve this for c. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and solve this for c. 
Uh, when you do that, you'll get C equals zero. Uh, notice that the same thing is going to happen with the other general solution that we will also get C equals zero if I plug in the initial condition on that. All right, so what that means is that I actually have two different forms of my general solution that satisfy the initial condition. For this first one, uh, when I put in C equals zero, I'm going to have uh, the square root of something cubed, so I'm going to write that as just a three halves power. Uh, and then for the second one, I'm going to have a similar equation. Remember that these are two different solutions. One of them is going to have positive y values for output, and the other one is going to have negative y values for outputs. All right, so I have two different ones here that pass through uh, the point zero, 0, you can verify that zero, 0 is on that. And then the other thing about this one is that the singular solution, if you think about the graph of that singular solution, the singular solution is really just a horizontal line, y equals 0, and that passes through the initial condition. So I really have on this one three different solutions that satisfy that initial condition. So we're going to talk later this week about some theorems about that, um, but this we might refer back to this particular example just thinking about that we had really had three different solutions that satisfied that initial condition. Um, all right, the other thing to think about with those might be interval of existence for the solutions. And since I have three different ones, I really have three different ones to talk about. Uh, for y is the constant function 0, that function is continuous and differentiable for all values of t. And if I go back up here and look at the differential equation, there are no values of t that cause trouble in the original differential equation. So this one has an interval of existence from negative infinity to infinity. All right, so when we think about these other two, I'm going to go ahead and distribute that exponent through, the 3 halves power through. So I have 1 third to the 3 halves, which if I go ahead and simplify that, if I cube the 1 third and then square root that, I get 1 over the square root of 27 for that coefficient there. And then t squared to the 3 halves power, so that simplifies to be t cubed. All right, so let's think about that a little bit. All right, so that function is continuous and differentiable everywhere. So it took me simplifying a little bit to get it in that form where it's easy to see that, but that's continuous and differentiable everywhere. And also the differential equation didn't have any problems at any particular values of t, so this one is also on negative infinity to infinity. And then our third one here, similarly, we're just going to have a minus sign out front of that. That also has an interval of existence from negative infinity to infinity. All right, we'll look at another example in the next video.